without further ado, spawning here at the bottom left, we have our red Terran player playing for the Shopify Rebellion. Give it up for Yun. And spawning here at the top right, we got our blue Zerg playing for the Dragon, the Phoenix, and the Gamers. Well, it's actually technically Dragon Phoenix Gaming, but you get my drift. It is dark. And, uh, of course, we're going to start off with none other than Inside and Out. One of the more popular maps. Now, of course, uh, this event takes place during the weekend or right after the weekend of the Home Story Cup. So many of the players are over there overseas and uh, trying to either they they trying to book a plane back home or they uh, just recently got back home. So a lot of the, a lot of the players that participated and played in Home Story Cup didn't actually play in this week's uh, ESL Open Cup. So, a lot of the more, you know, common and familiar names, not on the bracket, but, of course, there are some players that did stay at home, and uh, these two players did, in fact, stay at home, as, uh, you know, both of these players are regulars in the ESL Open Cup anyways, so not surprised to see them, uh, but this is the final, so they have made it on the way. We'll see which of these guys will be our champion. Starting off here, we got the Reaper coming in. We're gonna grenade some of these drones, but for the most part, oh, actually gets one. Wasn't able to get that spore crawler down in time. So a nice little find there by Byun. Does forces out six lings out of dark. Now, you know, certain, certain Zerg players, they do like to stay with four and just like stick with it for the initial Reaper, but you do see some Zerg players that do uh, favor the six link opening to help defend, just to be a little bit extra safe. Oh, unfortunately, I don't read the Korean here, so uh, not quite sure what Beyond is saying, but I do recognize what Dark is saying. Uh, I believe that's the GG symbol, if I'm not mistaken. I could be totally wrong, but looks like the uh, Reaper will make his well, no, actually, does not make his way into the natural. Got scared a bit by that second uh, queen there. And uh, wow, this is not what you see every day a 330. Link speed upgrade starting the research. Uh, this is a very peculiar. I mean, by by this time, the link speed should be done, but in fact, Dark has elected to delay the link speed by quite a lot, just favoring the more economic opening. So it looks like Dark is going to have to rely on Queens for the time being to pretty much. Hold the ground for the Zerg. Beyond, on the other hand, uh, also going for a kind of an economic opening with uh, three orbitals off the bat. So both of these players just kind of respecting one another, as both of these players are just kind of are just going to go ahead and try to macro up. You see a lot of drones in the production tab. And this is this is going to be uh, kind of a wait and see kind of thing as both of these players are gearing up. Uh, you do see a Bing nest being thrown down. I believe that should that just mainly for defensive purposes. I don't see Dark going for an all-out Ling Bingling attack as he queues up more drones on the production tab. Meanwhile, on the on the other side, we do have the Red Terran 
about to finish a stim researching one one so all in all pretty standard and passive by both of these players now dark trying to of course spread the creep as much as possible this is a large map in terms of spreading creep you got to spread it through the middle but also into the left and to the right there's bases all over the place where you really need the creep to uh help during those engagements and uh Looks like Dark not only delaying the link speed, but also delaying the upgrades as the evolution chambers are just now being thrown down. So everything just really kind of delayed here in favor of more uh, workers. Oh, nice little cute micro trick there. So of course, you know, if you know where the uh, Kree Tumor is, uh, you can just place your Reaper on top of it. And then have the Hellions fire at the Reaper to do the splash damage onto the Kree Tumor. Now the Kree Tumor does have low life so it does get killed off. But the Reaper does have uh, some amount of health points in which they can survive. So they don't necessarily die and of course Reapers can uh, heal up over time. So nice little trick there. But of course there's so many Queens out. For a dark that it doesn't really matter, he can just kind of replace that creep tumor immediately. As you can see there, once again, dark replacing those uh, creep tumors as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, dark is just going crazy with the bases. I mean, right now he's got five bases versus the three bases of Beyond. And of course, again, that does delay the tech and all the upgrades that you can see. 1-1 uh, about to finish, not quite done. Uh, Bailing uh, speed, centrifugal hooks, is about done though. So that should uh, help during those engagements if uh, Beyond decides to commit into it. A lot of links on the production tab. He is wary and kind of anticipating this push here by Beyond. As Beyond is starting to... Kill off these creep tumors. Recess the creep a bit. Got more reinforcements. I think, uh, actually, kind of holding back the reinforcements. And there is a potential Ling run by, of course. There's always a potential Ling run by when you play against Zerg. Uh, but it looks like Beyond is just kind of spreading off his some of the units to the left and to the right just to pick off those creep tumors. And now it looks like uh, he's engaging into that. To that third base of Beyond, oh sorry, of a Dark. Beyond smartly taking advantage of the terrain. We'll go ahead and lift off into the main base and just pulling Dark left and right. He still got that drop into the left side, but right now just focusing on the main base to drop here. And so many banelings here for Dark. 15 on the production tab. As uh, he's just mainly fighting against a lot of Marines, and that's what you want when you're fighting against a lot of Marines. You just want a lot of Bailings. And right now, uh, you know, Yun actually finding some damage here and there, but not too anything too significant. But, I mean, as I say, that 2-2 is about to be finished for Byun, and that's where his... You know, bow units are gonna get really scary. I mean, two two versus one one. It's like a noticeable difference. Quite noticeable if you uh, ever played uh, either Terran or Zerg. And we're only now is the two two being researched for Dark, so he is way behind. I mean, he's literally building his two two, uh, upgrading his 2-2 at the same time that Byun is researching his 3-3, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be two upgrades behind here. Nice reaction time, doesn't suffer any damage. Uh, but there is another drop into the main base here. Oh my goodness, these Widowmites getting so much efficient trades here as Byun is attacking 
at the pocket, the dirt side, the pocket base as well at the same time. Is there anything there to defend? No, not in time. The hatchery is so low in life. Finally takes it and snipes it down as the rest of Dark's units still placed at the main base trying to trying to defend uh, and hold down that fort. Could use uh, definitely use some of these banelings actually in these uh, defenses. But uh, Beyond's getting so much efficient trades here. He's starting to pull ahead in the supply, but we do see 2 2 about to be finished for uh, Beyond. Oh, sorry, for Dark. So for a time, a period of time, the. Uh, oh, 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 <laughs> Dark was paying attention. Oh, another Banelink destination. It's a huge chunk of those Marines, and that is what Dark needed to equalize the supply here as he uh, pushes Beyond back. Beyond still ahead, though, in the overall supply, but if he can, get, if Dark can get those bailing hits, those bailing connections, that is going to be kind of the momentum shifter. So right now, Beyond is having all the momentum. He's the one in the driver's seat. He's the one on the attack. He's the one harassing and dropping and pulling Dark left and right. Alright, I like this uh, from Dark though. He's starting to add in Hydralis because you know, there's a period of time where you can rely on Lings and Banelings to defend for the most part, but as the game progresses on, gotta start adding in some additional units besides links and banelings especially with the micro and kiting of of Byun and the splits that he uh he usually can execute against uh, those banelings so definitely want to go ahead and add in some additional units however his uh, units his army positioning is uh, getting a little bit on the stretch thin here as he's trying to defend so many different bases he's not sure where to put and position his units and so beyond is gonna snipe off two hatcheries here pushing down dark all the way down to three hatcheries which is just just so devastating right now as beyond is trying to establish i believe his uh one two three four fifth command center a five cc terran versus a three well, now four hatchery is Zerg, so boy, oh boy, Dark, uh, his economy has been reset into the Stone Age here as he tried to retake uh, all these hatchery. And in the meantime, Beyond smartly just gonna go ahead and focus on the Creed Tumor because right now he knows that Dark is trying to re establish his economy. He's uh, investing in those resources into hatcheries, into uh, simulators. And at the time, at the perfect moment, he can go ahead and go for the attack, which he does right now. Not the greatest split, I, I gotta say, by Beyond, but I think it's gonna be just enough to maybe overwhelm a Dark. I mean, right now, Dark is fighting off a creep, and yeah, all the bailings are gone, and Beyond, he's gonna take a decisive and strong game number one. Again, this uh, map is quite pretty to look at in terms of, I mean, if you are a tur tourist in the StarCraft 2 world, I mean, Waterfall is uh, definitely a tourist destination for sure. I mean, there are so many beautiful trees there. Got a river stream as well. Got some nice rocks. Got some nice critters as well. And some uh, interesting looking plants. So definitely a uh, great sightseeing map here. Once again, going to be a Reaper opening from Beyond. He did get one drone in the last game. Will he get another one? We, will, we shall wait and see here. And, uh... Gonna be interested to see if Dark is gonna go ahead and go for that same build last game where he delayed his link speed by so much and also, oh, looks like the Observer is focusing on the beautiful river stream here. 
Um, gonna be interested interested to see if a uh, uh, dark gonna go for the same very macro intensive kind of opening he did in the previous game where he delayed the link speed by so much as well as the upgrades uh, that came to kind of bite him in the behind because for a long section of the game he uh, he was quite behind on the upgrades so that was uh, of course one of the factors that kind of led to the, the demise of dark I think along with that is the army positioning where you know beyond it was just dropping everywhere and attacking everywhere and dark wasn't able to kind of split his units uh, efficiently to defend that and I guess that's the trouble with uh, going for so many hatcheries that early on is that you got so many places to defend and you gotta kind of decide where to put your units at Looks like a uh, ooh, we have a quick armor here for Beyond. Oh, huh. is he going for a Hellbat timing push? I mean, he does got the reactor on that factory. It seems like it. He's uh, hiding some of his uh his Hellions just in case Dark sends a Ling to scout. And then of course with the Medivac, the Medivac can provide healing powers. For those Hellbats. Alright, army are about to be done. Uh, let's see if Dark has any uh, idea that this is coming. As uh, he does have Link Speed about to finish. He throws down spy two Spine Crawlers. The question is, is are those uh, Spine Crawlers going to be up in time? I mean, looks like the natural spine crawler might get taken down immediately. Yeah, gets knocked off. And Beyond is gonna go ham on these uh these queens. All these queens are pretty much low on energy. However, that crucial medevac does get sniped off, so nice target fire on that by Dark. And uh yeah, with some nice spread of these queens, I think he should be able to defend and clean this up here. Let's see here. Uh, 18 lanes going down. No queens. Actually, all the queens survived, which is pretty nice. Because uh, Beyond uh, Dark doesn't have to remake that. Uh, remake all those queens. So, yeah. Looks like a pretty decent hold here by Dark. As he only mainly loses lanes, which I think he, he should be happy with. I mean, Lings are just mainly mineral based units, so I mean, Queen is also but, I mean, Queens they each cost 150 minerals, so much more expensive mineral resource uh, unit here. Oh, but looks like Beyond is not stopping with the aggression as he tries to poke in with try to poke in with the uh, Hellions doesn't quite find anything so yeah, a great hold here for Dark as he uh, can just mainly focus on droning up as he, uh, as you can see, 10, 11 drones on the production tab. Got the bailing nest as well. However, uh, he's going to have to start getting his upgrades up, uh, up and running. Uh, he is going to be so much more less behind on the upgrades as he does have his evolution chamber and only one one for Yun is uh is about like 25 percent done and uh yeah it looks like yeah dark does start one one on uh for himself as well and uh yeah now dark just gotta spread the creek tumors uh, on the other side though Byun trying to establish his third base and looks like the game does kind of slows down and gets back into normal mode Looks like Byun is sticking with the uh, Ling Bingling Hydralisk composition. 
which is a pretty decent composition, I gotta say, against Terran. You can uh, morph in those Lurkers as well from the Hydralis. Looks like a 1-1 one, on one the finish up for Bjorn as he makes his way across the map. Looks like he wants to hit this timing push. However, he's going to be fighting without combat shield uh, momentarily as that is trying to finish. That's just like a tad behind the 1-1. Uh, one, one. So will he wait for it or will he not? It looks like he will wait for it as he sets up, that sets up his, uh, kind of his uh, slow tank push of sorts. Uh, only one tank here though. And it looks like the reinforcements are going to get picked off uh, by these links. So uh, links here. Uh, so Dark doing a nice job just cutting off all help here. And Beyond is going to have to fight with whatever he has at this at, at this uh, 12. Oh! Nice Baneling run by there as Beyond was preoccupied with the attack here at the 12 o'clock base. And he gets nothing done. Dark is going to hold and take down 8 SCVs. Dark is uh, so much more sharper in this game. However, Beyond not letting up on the pressure. I'm going to go ahead and go for a second round here. Uh, I don't know, man. It's still one tank army. There's a lot of Marines, but more Balings being morphed in. I just don't see this attack accomplishing much here especially with the amount of queens uh, you can see the ling run by by dark once again this time it's going to be a bunch of links instead of bane links gets eight more drones get nine more drones might even get the cancel yeah i think he's going to get the cancel in the meantime uh, dark trying to defend here does he, I, I think he could just let up yeah he just could just give up this hatchery i mean he still got one at the three o'clock and he has done so much damage with this ling run by that I think he can't afford to just give it up. Although, to be fair, I feel like Dark could have actually defended that, but I mean, he doesn't really need to. Just got, just want to make sure he buys enough time to get enough army to defend and push this uh, army back here on the left side. And there we have it. Lurker then does get thrown down. So yeah, we're gonna have a Ling Bailing Hydralis Lurker army composition coming here from Dark. And uh, I love it. He is uh, he's in a great position. He uh, got 80 to 65 drones. His army is pretty scary as well. He's only facing against one tank, which immediately uh, immediately gets sniped off. Oh, there's another tank at the natural, but that does not help out any of those 28 SCVs. Make it 32 SCVs that gets killed and annihilated here at the third base of Bion. And Bion, once again, when they have his third base get under fire. Um, oh, there's a nice decent marine force here from Bion. Does Dark have enough banelings here? He's sending back his, some of his army. And yeah, I think Dark, yeah, he should have more than enough, especially with the Queens. And, uh, yeah, Dark's uh, static uh, defense with the Spores doing a nice job zoning out these uh, medibacks. So, yeah, Dark right now, he is sitting pretty. I mean, I, I would love to see him drone up a little bit more. I feel like uh, at this point, points uh he should have more drones but i mean he's way ahead of beyond so it doesn't even really matter and now the question is what does beyond do to try to get himself back into this game i mean leave his dirt base undefended is not the answer here uh, but I can't blame him as he's trying to focus on attacking his opponent. He needs 
to hit him hard and he's got to commit all his forces across the map. So for the time being, Abyan once again is going to have to lift off that command center, that orbital here at the third to lay some of that uh, mining time of Abyan. Dark just uh, being so active with his links. Now is the scary part though for Yun. More and more lurkers are being added into Dark's army. And at a certain point, I don't see much that Yun has to defend against those lurkers. I mean, he doesn't have any Ghost Academy on the way, doesn't have any Liberators to uh, zone those lurkers out. I mean, Dark, he, he doesn't quite have the optimal amount. He doesn't have the, uh, the, um, the numbers of uh, Lurkers able to move across the map, but at a certain point, he will have. I mean, the only thing that's holding him back is that he doesn't have as much gas, uh, but he's sticking more and more hatcheries towards the left side of the map. I'm going to go ahead and pr try to mine the gas off of those, and uh, yeah, he's going to start morphing in those Lurkers. And the more and more lurkers that Dark has, the more comf comfortable he enough for him to just move across the map. Uh, leave, maybe even leave some lurkers back at home in case Beyond goes for a uh, counterattack or a base trade of some sort. So, yeah, it's not looking good here for our Red Terran. But you know what? Beyond, when he's behind, he shines. He goes into Super Saiyan mode. Unlike uh, other players, and <laughs> unfortunately that won't be the case here as he's just way, way, way behind. And Dark is going to even up the series. And uh, what do we have here? Got ourselves a two Rax proxy. Oh, looks like Emil had to. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think uh, Emil has led to so many disconnects that he has become a mean now. Like people like make fun of him <laughs> for disconnecting so much. <laughs> Let's go ahead and check this. Uh, yeah, he does see it. Let's see how dark defends against this now. His spawning pool not quite up yet, so. Looks like Dark is going to have to rely on his drone pool for the time being. Oh, nice surround there on that bunker. We'll force it cancel immediately. That will buy Dark some time. And the creep uh, spreading as well, so it makes it even harder for the Terran to throw down the bunker. And oh my god, these Marines getting surrounded so well by these drones. Dark just defending this with flying colors. My goodness. Now he does lose his five drones, a lot of mining time loss as well, uh, but he does shut this uh, this two racks down. You know what? I, I, you know, actually, in hindsight, I think maybe Dark might have lost a, a bit too much drones there. So I, I would say maybe that was a bit more even than uh, initially thought. But boy, that's around on those Marines was a, a nice sight indeed. It looks like the game continue, continues on, excuse me. <clears throat> As, uh, yeah, I mean, Worker's a bit more closer than uh, I think Dark would like. But he's not dead, so... We'll see uh, how he kind of progresses along. Does he go for a two-base Mutalist kind of play, or does he go for a Dirk Hatchery and, like, focuses back onto Macro? I think uh, Byun's plans, though, are going to be pretty clear. Usually, once a uh, two racks is pretty much done, the Terran player will go ahead and just transition to Hellions, factory with reactor, rely on those Hellions to defend against any potential Ling attack. Because really, the, the Zerg player is not going to have uh, many options after being rushed like that. He's not going to have the gas to make a lot of roaches to go for a counterattack. So. 
normally Hellions will be the perfect transition for a Terran to at least make sure he doesn't die anytime soon. Now the question is, will Beyond throw down a third CC? Because we do see sometimes that, you know, if the Terran uh, feels uh, confident enough, he will throw down a Orbital. Once he recognizes that there is no like un incoming Roach attack, uh, he will go and throw down a a third CC and uh, just mm, make a lot of SCVs, get a lot of Mews. And just kind of pull ahead in the macro that way. Um, looks like we don't have a quick third base. In fact, we have a Banshee transition coming from Beyond. And I wonder if the Zerg saw that. I don't believe he saw that with the Overlord. Because the uh, Starport was actually a bit more down on the main base. So... Yeah, I, I don't see. I don't see a lair starting at all as well. I don't see spore crawlers. I don't think Dark Sky is that, and I think that might that might uh it, it might be a bit scary for Dark here if he has no detection. I mean, Cloak is about halfway done. Okay, he's starting to throw down one spore, just a safety spore. Because sometimes if you, as a Zerg, if you don't see anything, if you don't scout anything from the Terran player. With that initial Overlord Scout, you throw down one safety spore just in case. Lair does get started, but it's going to be a little too late. There's going to be no Overseer for Dark. And uh, let's see here. Where's that Banshee? Okay. Let's go ahead and... Okay, looks like the Banshee will go ahead and start making his way into the mineral line. Okay, I'm following a uh, steadfast uh, camera here. But let's go ahead and just focus on the Banshee for now. As uh, Banshee gets 10 workers here. My goodness. However, it looks like Dark uh, did drone up heavily in the early game that even though he lost so many workers, he's still ahead double digit here, which is uh, pretty nice. Uh, however, he's still waiting for that Overseer, that Overseer about to morph in, but the, oh, actually a little bit of a miss in my grow. Beyond could have saved that Banshee if he headed towards the, the north side, but Unfortunately, it does loses that Banshee. Also loses that Viking as well. Wow. Looks like Beyond is just focused on moving out with the, these Marines. All right. Let's go ahead and focus back on Steadfast webcam. Or not webcam. Uh, camera. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and try to focus fire on this hatchery. Does force to cancel. This is a pretty awkward time for Dark as he's trying to transition into Hydralis, but it doesn't look like the Hydralis will be out in time. There are so many queens though. Let's see, how many queens is that? Eight queens here. A good, decent amount of queens. Oh, what a position there by the cliff to park the tank. I mean, right there, I mean, like the link, if the Ling's wanted to get us around, the simulator completely blocks that off, which is just amazing spot to, uh, just to kind of, uh, siege up against a Zerg player. And uh, that makes sense why Dark got, went for the 6 o'clock dirt base instead of that dirt pocket. Because, uh,. If you get a tank there sieged up, I mean, that is uh, quite abusive of a position. But anyhow, looks like uh, Beyond is going to go ahead and start pulling ahead. And it's that, uh, it's that attack did actually really kind of uh, halted Dark. Now, as I say that, Dark's creep spread is pretty good. He's about halfway there, halfway across the map. Uh, starting to get his 1-1, it seems. 
but yeah, I think uh, he's finally stabilized. I mean, once those uh, hydralis has popped out, uh, popped out of the uh, hatchery, I think uh, he should be fine. I mean, Yan is gonna be had to be extra careful with these drops because now there's anti-air. You know, Byun wasn't afraid to drop and harass because, you know, there wasn't any anti-air, but now that there are hydrolysis out in the field, he's got to be extra careful. You don't want those medivacs being sniped out as they fly away, but... Anyhow, one of the good things about the map is that there are watchtowers. This provides so much vision here for the players. Oh, one tank. Let's get caught off guard. Looks like a bad, uh, bad queue or bad uh, pathway. Alright, looks like a uh, infestation pit about to be done. That should allow Dark to go, go for a hive to start getting those uh, lurkers. We should expect a uh, lurker then being thrown down as the hive is about to uh, is just started right now. So you want to, you know, you can basically time it so that the hive and the lurker then finishes at the same time. Looks like both players are just gonna go ahead and kind of a uh, macro and just kind of build up their army right now. I mean, Dark basically gonna rely on Ling, Bailings, and Hydralis. Doesn't look like that Leopard Den is being thrown down quite yet. Gonna rely on uh, that composition for a bit of time. You know, make sure he's uh, stabilized before he throws down that Leopard Den. Uh, meanwhile, Beyond. Just trying to find some damage here and there. I mean, it's getting to the point where Dark is about to take half of the map here. So, you know, while that does bode well for Dark's economy, that does allow beyond the, the option to just harass and drop, you know, multiple bases. Um, and so it's going to be important for Dark to get control of those watchtowers to make sure uh, where Beyond's army is coming from to get as much vision to, you know, to place his army to defend. I would love it to see if, you know, Dark just throw some overlords, you know, to the right and to the left as well. I mean, there's no Vikings, you know, patrolling there to, you know, take it down. So, I mean, that will literally provide him all the vision needed to defend any potential drops. All right, so we're heading uh, into kind of the late game upgrade, you know, tech tree as both players are getting, you know, their uh, upgrades, you know, in terms of the uh, plus one one, or actually the plus two two. Uh, Vipers being added as well. Man, the Vipers though, that could be the game changer because Vipers plus Lurkers, that combination is quite deadly. I mean, you pull in those tanks into the Lurkers, you annihilate all the tanks, maybe even throw down a blinding cloud on a, a bunch of them, on a bunch of tanks. And the rest is uh, pretty much easy to deal with. They're just mainly Marines, which the Baneline can definitely handle. The uh, Hydrolis can, of course, take down those uh, Medvacs as well. And, uh, but man, boy, I just realized both players are at 88 workers. Uh, 18 more workers queued up for Dark. He's going to go over 100 workers in this game. Absolutely insane. And, uh, I mean, it's no surprise. I mean, Data C is a map where a lot of bases are present on the map. It's a huge, huge map. So games like this, you know, 
can, it's definitely possible on a map like this where there's so many minerals and gas to be mined. There's so many bases to take. And uh, we now are seeing Dark. Oh my god, I just realized Dark getting another 15 drones. I mean, Jesus, how many? Well, I guess uh, he's used a lot of drones for his spore colors to make sure uh, he defend all those drops. Uh, but yeah, he's adding those two spires, just branching off into different tech trees. If he wants to transition into a Ling Bane Ling's Mutalis, he can definitely... Or maybe he's just adding in Broodlords. Uh, Broodlords with a combination of Lurkers and Vipers. That's just so, so hard for the Terran to deal with. Uh, while Beyond, he's starting to add in more factories. I would suspect those are for doors. I mean, because doors are going to be pretty good against Broodlords any potential Broodlord uh, transition. Um, so... We shall see. We shall, sh uh, we shall see as uh, we are headed over the 15 min mark. Both players are just establishing their side of the map. Uh, funnily enough, Dark is starting to take over uh, Beyond's bases. We see some uh, doors starting to be added in. And uh, this is getting to the point where the Terran uh, is starting to add in a bunch of CC command center to go ahead and morph into those uh, orbitals and maybe some into planetaries. Um, and, you know, uh, he's sitting at 87 workers, which is going to take up some of those uh, army supplies spl uh, slots. So uh, we shall see Beyond starting to, you know, kind of sacrifice some of those STVs. Uh, mainly rely on those mules and just have enough for the gas mining so uh, that shall open up and increase help increase his uh, army supply count I mean he's right now ahead in the army supply but Dark's army uh, composition pretty pretty scary I think Yun definitely wants to open up uh, more slots more supply for army instead of uh, his workers so uh, he's getting to the point where he's gonna have a bank. We see Dark already has a decent sized bank, uh, about 6.3k minerals, uh, 2.5k gas, uh, while Beyond is sitting at 2.7k minerals, uh, 1.4 gas. So he has a little bit more money to do before he sacks those uh, CC, or sorry, those sack those uh, SEVs. Actually, let's take a look at the. Uh, The uh, army value here. Yeah, looks like Vyun is uh, got a lot of more resources invested into the, the into that army here. Uh, we got let's see, 16 gas, 13 ghosts, and three Thors. Could use a bit more on the door count um, and less on the SAB, of course. Uh, on the other side, though, we have uh, 11 hydralis, 27 bailings, five investors, and two. Vipers, and here we go. Dark gonna go ahead and start sacrificing some of these banelings. He definitely wants to open up some supply to open up for maybe potential broodlords or or something else. Oh, if he can get those ghosts, though. Oh my God, those ghosts are okay. He does split them at the last second, but man, those ghosts were a bit clumped up to my liking. Nice split there by Beyond will allow him to, of course, take out this uh, top left base, but more than plenty enough bases to go around for Dark, as uh, he's just taking pretty much a half of the map. And uh, we have come to this stage, ladies and gentlemen, where <laughs> we have nukes being thrown around and Beyond is going to just go ham. Uh, Let's see here. How many Ghost Academy? Only one Ghost Academy. So maybe not so much going ham. Uh, but it will allow him to kind of get some nice zoning. I could definitely see Beyond throwing down a bunch of Ghost Academies and researching a bunch of nukes. And it's going crazy. Just sending uh, ghosts everywhere to throw down those nukes. Um, 
32 workers going down for Dark, but he has more than enough. I mean, he's uh, sitting happy at 86 workers. Actually, both players are sitting at 86 workers, funny enough. I think at this point, though, Beyond should start looking to start uh, throwing away his SCVs. Uh, he has a, a, a more than enough mineral uh, bank here. Uh, looks like he's not quite there yet. Okay, he's adding a, a, a fusion core, which uh, will allow him to maybe go for some BCs or maybe even Liberator uh, range. I don't see a Liberators on the map though, so I think it might be for uh, BC transition. Um, but yeah, it looks like Dark has uh, the nine Broodlord, so. I mean, this this is, could be the start of uh, Dark just knocking at the door because these bases are getting close to one another. I mean, if you see, especially on the right side, like <laughs> the two o'clock base of Beyond versus the three o'clock base of Dark is pretty much touching one another. So Beyond uh, gotta be worried that Dark can do the slow push where you you know you just move forward with a bunch of spores and use the broodlords to start you know whacking away at the ground units. But as I say that you know there is the the nuke potential, so that will force of course uh, Dark to push being you know to run back until the nuke uh, finishes, and then he can uh, start moving the spore callers you know forward once again. But here we go, broodlord is going to go ahead and start. Attacking this uh, pocket base here, but you know this, this base is pretty much mined out. Not going to be too important. Meanwhile, uh, Dark going to go ahead and trade some of his uh, hydrogens and bailings onto the left side. Uh, looks like that planetary will hold for now, though. Um, Dark going to actually rotate his broodlords towards the left side as Beyond's army is going to go ahead and start attacking onto the left side. And I hear a Nidus. Where is that Nidus? Looks like the observer doesn't quite focus on the Nidus uh, worm. Let's go ahead and actually. Uh... Okay. Okay. Looks like it's on dark side of the map. So. None into the main base. Uh, we do have a lot of sensor towers. So. Looks like Beyond should be able to be cognizant of the fact that there are Nidus Worms out there and if there is any Nidus Worm in his base, he should be able to react in time. And here we go, Beyond starting to trade out some of these SCBs finally as he has a nearly 9k mineral bank. Like these uh, three doors won't be able to come out here alive, and uh, yeah, looks like Beyond is starting to establish his side of the map. I mean, he's killed the, some of the hatcheries that were taken earlier, establishing the planetaries on his side, taking out another hatchery. However, throughout this whole time, guys, be mindful that these investors and these vipers they've been gaining energy. And they're gonna be able to to use those spells throughout that huge fight later on. However, Dark's gotta be careful not to get EMP. One EMP, and that could take out a flock of infestors uh, and render them useless during the engagement. It's really gonna. I mean, it's heading towards that situation where it's just gonna come down to uh, a huge engagement. Uh, well, actually, a couple of huge engagements because both of these players are banking quite a lot of resources. Nice fungal growth there by Dark. Uh, however, it doesn't quite have enough fungal chains to kill off all these uh, ghosts. Trying to sacrifice some banelings on these ghosts uh, does dwindle the number down to, let's see here, nine ghosts. Still plenty of ghosts around. So not not too 
detrimental. And of course, he uh, has enough resources to replenish them and uh, remake those ghosts. Uh, Dark, uh, actually, we're gonna stick with Balings for now. And, uh, just getting the upgrades, just kind of uh, re establishing his spore wall. And it's gonna be important for Dark to fight near the spore uh, wall there. He doesn't want to fight off creep. Uh, because those spores really allow him to defend against those uh, Liberators and those uh, Metavax as well. And also kind of provide a hindrance. Kind of a, a blockade for those Broodlords to kind of retreat. Because those doors probably won't be able to kind of uh, run up and through those spore collars to get underneath those uh, Broodlords. And oh nice little snipe there. Let's take down two uh, Broodlords there. How many Broodlords is that? Let's see here. 12. Okay, 12 Broodlords. A lot of Balings, though. And, ooh, they don't quite get a lot here during this engagement. A lot of the doors still remaining. And also some uh, chunk of Ghosts, so... Not the most efficient trade. But, uh, looks like Dark is getting a decent fight here at this uh, right side. As there's pretty much nothing here to defend. Oh! Nice fungal growth will trap a, a bunch of ghosts here. Take them, take them out, and that means uh, darkest or sorry, beyond is gonna have to remake some of those ghosts, and those ghosts are not gonna start off with a lot of energy. So beyond is gonna have to wait for those ghosts to spike up on those energy, and I don't think uh, dark is gonna give him enough time as he is knocking at the front door, getting on top of the production buildings. This is pretty much the majority of where all the production buildings are for Beyond. He's gonna either have to remake it onto the right, oh, no, the left side here. And this map is not that great in terms of building layout. In terms of making a bunch of buildings uh, beside, you know, outside of your main base. Just because of the layout, you know, the terrain. And uh, we have ourselves as some sort of base trade. Interestingly enough. Hive is going to get sniped out. But yeah, pretty much both of these players are going to be going to reset it into the Stone Age with their production. Uh, Beyond trying to remake them desperately as he adds in five, five barracks out in the map. However, Dark, I don't think he has many opportunities to remake a bunch of buildings as a lot of his tech buildings has been sniped off. So, I mean, he is trying to remake the the Lurker then, but he's going to have to defend this. Like right now, Byun is rotating around, just killing off bases, and eventually he will reach that bottom, uh, the bottom right base where his Lurker then is being remade. Goodness, even the spawning pool needs to be remade as well. So it doesn't do Dark any good if he has all these resources and he can't remake anything. Uh, he does still have the, sp the, the, the spires, so he can remake those broodlords if he wants to. But he should definitely have an overlord uh, vomit creep there to keep them uh, to keep both of those spires alive. But I think he's right now focusing on his army. I mean. As well as he should be, because it's that moment where, or that's that that stage of the game where one bad engagement and you're not gonna have a lot of chances to come back into this game. I mean, all the the mineral bases, all the bases, uh, are starting to get mined out. Let's look at the uh, resources lost tab. Oh my goodness. Pretty much identical. Like maybe about one key difference, but pretty much identical. And this game has just been bonkers as both players still not able to kill off their opponents as we are about to head into the 29 minute mark. And yeah, a lot of these, <laughs> a lot of these buildings and 
and stuff are pretty much gone, so they're pretty much working with whatever they have right now. <laughs> Dark once again had to throw down a spire, and little does he know he has two spires sitting at that bottom left. Okay, so as I see it right now on the minimap, Byun sitting pretty in terms of uh, the remaining bases. Like a lot of the bases he has still are the more freshly new bases. Um, that's gonna allow him to, you know, get more uh, minerals and gas stored up. Uh, he's still not so pretty on the gas count, but again, he has a newer bases, so the gas uh, bank should rise relatively soon, but. On the other side, Dark uh, has a lot. He has, he has basically twice as much uh, gas as he has mineral banked up. Okay, so he does know that he has, you know, spires, uh, and he's still making another one. He should definitely cancel that, recoup some of the gas and minerals. But I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, that he still has a decent bank there. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus on the middle of the map where pretty much both of these players are trying to congregate to as uh, a lot of the spores here, a lot of the army here. Oh, actually got some nice change. Link gets in sight of the army position of Byun. That's going to allow Dark to kind of maneuver around, send some uh, group of army here at to the left side. So uh, nice snipe there. Interesting. He's going to actually replenish the lost supply with more brood lords. So I think he he realizes that there are a lot of doors out in the map and it seems like he wants to overwhelm the amount of door count with just mass brood lords cuz you know door generally does do well against brood lord but if you have that uh if you have the, a certain amount of brood lords over your opponent, then you know what? It can actually work out. There, there will be too much doors, or sorry, too much of brood lords for the doors to handle, especially with a uh, narrow parasite by those investors. So the idea is that you narrow parasite the frontline doors, which blocks the rest of the other doors from getting on top of the brood lords. And the brood lords, meanwhile, will just throw down, throw out free broodlings to just start killing all the other doors. That are, you know, that are kind of behind the uh, narrow the door. So, I mean, it, it gets really difficult for Byun to engage head on into Dark's army. So, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to come down to the army control here. And I would imagine that both of these players are going to display a really top, high level, top tier level type of micro. And execution during uh, this uh, last final conclusion of this game because I mean the bases are pretty much mined out. I, I would imagine that these players are going to commit to an attack relatively soon. A bunch of scans throwing being thrown out on the map, just making sure where everything is. And, uh, yeah, you can see there, a lot of these mineral patches are disappearing, so... Alright, both players are maxed at 200-200 supply. Starting to throw down, uh, throw and throw away uh, these SCVs, gonna free up more supply, which is uh, pretty smart because right now he's got a ton of workers still. A 
Yeah, this is what I was saying. It's really hard for Beyond to engage head on with that many Broodlords. He doesn't have the air fleet enough to. Oh, actually, maybe he does. I think a lot of the corruptors got morphed into Broodlords, but they're, again, the Spore Callers providing uh, the anti air for, for Dark. So, be honest. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's saying, but he's like probably saying this is ridiculous. Like, how am I supposed to engage this? There's so many broodlings. My goodness, there's so many broodlings. I mean, if, if broodlings can be eaten, I mean, this is probably end the world to hunger, right? I mean, there's so many little broodlings. Here we go. Kind of a little bit of a dance back and forth. And uh, I love this. Uh, Dark is right now, he is not getting too ahead of himself. He is just, you know, just pushing Beyond a little bit back. And then moving forward a little bit with his bars. Uh, just inching closer and closer. And at certain points, he's going to force Beyond into a corner. And, you know, Beyond is going to have to, you know, start fighting. Right, looks like Beyond is ready to possibly fight back here and he tries to info inch forward here closer to the Brulers but my goodness Infestors providing a, a great defense just fungling and there's just so much Brulers there's no Raven here to shoot out an anti-armor missile that will definitely help during this engagement as these Brulers are so clumped up and right now Dark is pushing on forward Oh my god, huge blinding cloud rendering these doors useless. He is uh, forcing Beyond to run back and... Oh, but a huge EMP on those Infestors. That is going to force Dark to run back onto his side into the creep here. As he tried to repl replenish some of those Infestors uh, energy. As well as those Vipers. So a huge engagement and uh, you can see a lot of the resources... Uh, being spent on replenishing their uh, army here. Beyond not doing too hot on the gas. He only has 2k gas. A lot, mineral, a lot of minerals. So, I don't know. Maybe he can... He, he might need to throw down a lot of uh, barracks and just make a lot of marines or something. But, I mean, at this point, marines are going to be pretty much useless against what Dark has. I mean, one fungal on those marines... Uh, it's pretty much game over. And yeah, pretty much the gas bank of Beyond has been depleted. So this is it. All the Vespine geysers pretty much mined out. Dark a little bit more balanced in terms of his uh, minerals and gas ratio. And this is the point where spellcasters are... The superior units because you know there's not a lot of options to replenish your army with a so low bank and so little little bases around left you just gotta rely on you know spell casters and dark has so many spell casters he has so many queens to transfuse those brood lords he has so many infestors to fungo and narrow those uh the army of beyond and he has so many Brood Lords, just pure Brood Lords for the damage dealing. Um, never mind the Vipers, the Vipers also can provide. Oh, there we have it. Another huge fungal growth. And these Brood Lords are trying to kill a lot of these doors, but actually, wait a minute. These doors being so sturdy and tanky, a lot of them actually survive still.
my goodness, how many? Oh my god, there's 29 Brood Lords left versus 12 Thors. I mean, Thors are so good, but that is crazy amount of Brood Lords still left over. Vikings all gone. Only three Ghost Remains. Or actually four ghost remains and the majority of the anti-air are gonna be on these doors and these doors are just fighting brood lords over and over and dark trading so efficiently zero exactly zero gas here remaining for beyond all he can remake are mineral units um, those marines hell bats he's doing whatever he can with these minerals but dark just trading so efficiently these brood lords still holding strong here. Now, a lot of these queens are gone and don't have a lot of energy. I think there was a huge EMP during the fight as well. So a lot of these infestors don't have the energy remaining to fungo. So it looks like that will give beyond the leeway to actually push forward. But look at here, no medevacs to heal those ghosts. These a lot of these doors are getting low on life as well. This is it. This is going to be the last stand. Whoever wins this fight is going to take the game. Another huge fungo and clown, uh, blind, blinding cloud combination. Dark is just going, just kind of using the uh, kind of kiting mechanism, the kiting strategy. Just uh, you know, shoot out those broodlings and retreat. Shoot out those broodlings and retreat. If he comes close enough, just fungo him. Stop, stop him in his tracks. Oh my goodness, and here we go. Nero on the doors as the final blow. And Dark taking a 41 minute game. And we'll take the series lead. Alright, so Stargazers, of course, one of the wonkier maps. I, I gotta refer this to as the Blackburn of the ladder map pool, because. <laughs> You know I like what? that. <laughs> yeah, because you know when when Blackburn first came out in the ladder map pool, it was one of those uh kind of weird wonky map that has had two goat bases. You know, kind of a weird layout as well. Uh, you know, you know the spawn at the horizontal position, similar to this, right. where both of these players are spawning at the hor horizontal position, and there's of course a golden map, uh, or sorry, not a gold map, a gold base at the middle bottom. So. Kind of uh, something to keep in mind uh, might come into the factor uh, throughout this game. Yeah, definitely. It reminds me of the... Well, I don't know if this was the first map to... I doubt it was the first map to do lateral spawns. But there was years, Year Zero, and that was also in Legacy of the Void. But one key difference between this map and all the other past maps is that we have that little pocket sort of natural slash third base which is blocked off by a couple of mineral patches. And so a lot of Terrans like to take that base instead because obviously you can build the command center off location, which is what Beyond is doing right now. Yeah, yeah. So that is something that's pretty interesting because first of all, it, it has never, if I don't if I recall cor uh, correctly, it has never been added uh, a feature in the previous map pool. And right. also it kind of you know plays with the this decision making from the Terran or maybe even the Protoss uh, to see and decide what you know basis they decide to go for. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that Reaper got a little stuck for just a second. But yeah, about the mineral patches, I think I've only ever seen them used as walls. Remember back when that first came out, it was like revolutionary, and then we had we had wild maps like Golden Wall and stuff like that, <laughs> and it was just great to watch in GSL. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and now we get to see it as a mechanic to potentially take an early or uh, potentially block off a base early on. You know, it's, it's kind of cool. I, I feel like there might have been some inspiration from maybe co-op or campaign or something. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I really still want that. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but there was a in the campaign where you know, the lava will rise and fall. Oh, yeah. It's like, if, if the lava rises, all your units die, unless you get into a yeah, safe ground. Dude, I love that. Oh, dude, if we could see that in, yeah. a, in an actual match, that would be amazing. 
pros would be, well, a lot of people would be very unhappy with that, but you, you cannot deny it. It would make the game exceptionally entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, man, I'm, I'm just hoping that one day they will implement to a ladder map and... Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Hopefully Frost Giant is listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So it looks like everything is more or less pretty standard here. We see Bion going for an early stim move out. Now, these marines, they're not intended to get a ton of damage done, but they kind of are intended to pick off overlords, pick off queens potentially, you know, catch the zerg off guard. I don't think they're going to get too much done here. They do get an overlord, which is nice, actually supply blocking uh, dark for the time being, but... Uh, that, that's sort of like a pre-stim move out. I've seen that a little bit more commonly nowadays. And by nowadays, I mean like within the past few weeks or so. Yeah, I mean, it does provide, you know, some great advantages in terms of you can catch any wandering overlords. But you can also, you know, catch some creep tumors uh, if, if uh, you know, Zerg player is uh, pushing forward with that. And you also kind of uh, catch some wandering queens maybe uh, of some sort. And then right. also you can force... Uh, you know the Zerg player to overreact and make a bunch of links for maybe for possibly just a few Marines and you know instead of you know having those larvae turn into drones you have them turn into links in which they, they can become useless if uh, the Terran just retreats back home right right nice hot pickup picking off a couple of creep tumors you know delaying the spread of creep into that pocket location that way Beyond can continue dropping if he wants to um, and then we also see a Roach one coming up. So is this going to be like sort of Roach Ling Bane? Ravager Ling Bane? Yeah, it would Although, seem so. Yeah, I just don't see a Bane Ling Nest just yet. Well, I'm sure it's coming up <laughs> if, uh, if he needs it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like uh, Dark just investing in some early game Roaches just to do, make sure he has enough to defend. You never know when, when the Terran is going to push out with like a tank push timing push uh, mm. and you want to have uh, enough you know ravagers to snipe that down um, right and, and you know it's hard if, if the Terran get into like those positionings those really difficult positions uh, where it limits the amount of links and failings to get on top of them in terms of the surface area then you, you're just gonna, gonna have to rely on corrosive bow to take care of those tanks yeah definitely now, the drone count kind of reminds me, like, this is a very dark type of thing, right? And then it's also a very serial kind of thing. You know, maybe a minute ago at 5 minutes, 30 seconds, he was still only on, like, 50 or so drones. And like you said, it's for those early roaches because he doesn't have Overlord vision of beyond side of the map anymore. He doesn't even have Ling vision, so he does not know, you know, whether or not there's going to be a huge tank push, which, speaking of which, there is a huge tank push coming across. He doesn't actually have confirmation of what kind of play Bion is going for. So I think that the early roaches are gonna pay off, the early ravagers uh, should be able to pay off. And actually, it looks like Dark is committing full on to Roach Ravager. We see the uh, plus one missile, plus one carapace instead of the plus one melee. Yeah, uh, and here we go. Oh, actually, ooh, the initial tanks does get clumped ooh. up here. So nice start for Dark, but oh my goodness. Bion's gonna go ahead and stem forward with his plus one marines and completely annihilate all these uh, roaches and ravagers, even the queens as well. These tanks are still oh. sitting pretty at the back. Okay, the final tank does get killed off, but what a trade there by Bion. That was amazing. <laughs> I, I thought that those marines were gonna do a lot less damage, but you know, they they do quite well when they have stem and uh, do they have? Yeah, so they have plus one attack as well. Which begins to explain things. But see, this is the part that confuses me. Against Roaches and Ravagers, do you want Marauders? Oh, well, okay. That answers my question. <laughs> <laughs> there are Marauders coming up. Because, you know, Marines, they do have much, much higher DPS. And just overall, they're better. But against Armored Units, you know, you would think on paper Marauders uh, counter that. And so we do see Bion incorporating uh, three Marauders at a time into his production. Yeah, which is pretty smart. And uh, once again, we have a little bit of a skirmish here out in the middle. Won't get too much done, but we'll uh, force Bion to run back, or to fly back better. 
I think those Liberators are just a little bit cheeky. You know, there are Ravagers on the map, and of course Ravagers, if you do get those Biles down. Speaking of which, these Biles miss the Stimmed Bio, and they're going to just go ahead and gun forward for the Roaches and Ravagers. The tanks are going to unsiege. All of a sudden, Dark's little skirmish force up here is getting kind of thinned out, so Roaches are going to reinforce from the north side. Biles are coming down, not quite connecting on everything. Liberator is doing some solid work. The rest of the bio is going to clean up some more roaches. All of a sudden, the supplies are way closer than they were a minute ago. Yeah, that's the difficulty with roaches and ravagers is that once the turret has tanks and liberators out, you know, you got to decide where do you want to focus those uh, process files on? Are the tanks or the liberators? And if you focus on one or the other, then, you know, you don't have enough for the rest. Uh, you know, right now, Dark mm. really is... Uh, desiring for some corruptors but he doesn't even have a spire out i don't i don't believe right right he's choosing to go for the hive before then now i can see some infestors coming out you know once dark actually has a standing army that doesn't melt <laughs> and then <laughs> yeah. like you see this the the roaches are just trying to trade bio kites you know well enough back to the tanks and then more roaches go down so in a way, it kind of feels like Dark is on a bit of a timer. And what I mean by that is that, you know, a Roach max out is much weaker than a Bio tank max out. And so, Bion is, is you know, if he is able to mass up to a, a, or, you know, gain up to a critical mass, then he can just overrun the Roach Ravager. And so, we do see that Baneling Nest coming in, we see that Hive coming in. And so, at this point, I think that Dark might actually go for Vipers, which would be an excellent, excellent unit to pair here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can yank uh, the Liberators and render them, you know, temporarily useless. Or maybe he can, uh, you know, blinding cloud the uh, the tanks and have his entire Roach Ravager force get on, on top of it. But, you know, Byun, he's, uh, he's preparing for it. Uh, he's getting his upgrades. He's expanding as well. He's still harassing, which I like. Uh, I don't think he's going to find too much here on the bottom side. So now he sees, he recognizes that his Zerg opponent is actually transitioning into a little bit of a different playstyle. We see a higher drone count coming up soon, and then we see a lot more Lings, we see some Banes on the production tab, so this is going to go into a more traditional sort of Ling Bane Ravager style. Now the Ravager, I I still don't get it, you know, I love Hydras. I know it's a bad thing to love, but I love Hydras, uh, no. and it's like, why would you replace, <laughs> why would you replace the, the Hydra with Ravagers? Of course, you know, in practice i can see the practicality of having files and that kind of thing and you know ravagers you can get them from tier one that you know that sort of uh, low tech advantage but i love hydras i love things that can shoot up as well <laughs> man i am 100 percent with you i love me some <laughs> ling ba bane lings and hydralis uh, yeah i think uh you know first of all you know medevac drops a bit more manageable uh because roaches and ravagers really can't shoot um medevacs i mean you know there is the crossbow but it's so hard to target on them uh right. the hydralis on the other hand they can definitely sight down those medevacs so you can kind of take that advantage away uh in terms of the terran just harassing you with you know drops after drops but then you can also transition to, transition to lurkers which are really great uh right general units exactly that was very cute. We saw the roaches on the south side sort of chasing the two medevacs, making sure that they don't actually drop down anywhere. Now, that is a lot of tanks, and I like the spire, but what I like even more are the ghosts coming up. We see, oh my gosh, Snoopy, that's five ghosts at a time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. man. Bion is going to be ready for anything. <laughs> And they are going to be doing so well against the Infestors, uh, the Vipers. Uh, here we go, Beyond trying to drop here, but looks like the Vipers oh, will nice. deal with them. Does he have enough? Oh, he does have enough. Okay, so the Lings are going to check on the 5th base, see that Beyond is building on location. 
So the game has really slowed down. Bjorn has felt comfortable enough with the damage, or with the trading at, at least, that he got done earlier in the game. Now he's sort of taking it easy. He's, uh, both players are macroing up, you know, trying to tech up. We see actually a second Spire along with that Greater Spire coming out for Dark. I, I like that move a lot. You know, you already have the Vipers. You're working on that Infestor tech. We saw the Infestor upgrades coming out earlier. So yeah, why not go into a Greater Spire as well? Yeah, he's definitely going to need some sort of tier 3 units uh, very soon because he's still right. relying on a lot of roaches and ravagers and you, we all know how much they inflate the supply, so they're not the oh, greatest yeah. units in the late game as you head toward the late game, for sure. Right, right. Okay, so I was going to ask if, if roaches are worth sniping down. But with that amount of bio, I, I don't think so. <laughs> no need. Well, you know, even though he didn't get too much done with the roaches, uh, he needed to get rid of some amount of supply in. Exactly. Uh, you don't want to, you know, just throw away the entire, ro you know, roach and ravager because you're going to have nothing to defend. Uh, but you right. can kind of slowly trade out those roaches and ravagers, and uh, I think, you know, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. So like you said, tier 3, we have Spellcasters coming out, we have the Corruptors out on the field as well. Now, both players are just about maxed out, and we see 5 Brewlords on the production tab, so like you were saying, you know, this is gearing up for a, a pretty pretty solid late game. Now, I just want to note that Beyond's main base has so much space, and whenever I off-race as Terran, I can never find space in my mains. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> cluttered, you know? I try to... I try to stack my production facilities on top of each other, you know, like in a, in a column or even in rows sometimes, but I can just never find the space. So I, I think maybe I should start building in other places besides my main. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. And sometimes you got to be like an architect of some sort to play this game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I really like Yun's tank spread. You know, he's got a few sprinkled here, a few sprinkled there, that way the Zerg can't actually poke and prod as much as they would like. Yeah, and I also not only the uh, the tank spread, but also the the uh, Sim City that he's kind of making right now. I mean, it's going to be really mm. hard for those Ravagers to get on top of the of the tanks. I mean, he's got to walk, you know, if, towards the planetary as well, turrets. It's going to be hard. I mean, right. Okay, so it looks like we have a main force of Ghost, Marauder, and a couple of Thors. Banelings are going to get on top of the Thors. Oh, they're actually going to get on top of the Marauders, and now even some of the Ghosts? Oh, wow. Okay, so those are some full energy Ghosts. They do stay alive, thankfully. There are uh, enough, uh, you know, there is enough bio to actually tank for some of the, uh, for some of the Banelings. And now the Broodlers are out. A uh, nice couple of, you know... Uh, fungals. I almost forgot the name there. Not gonna get too much done though. Yeah. <laughs> that Nidus is very cute. Yeah, that's a that's definitely a cute play there. With the Nidus in front of oh. your opponent. Oh, actually, wow, nice uh, ghost play there by Beyond catching Doug a little bit off guard. But yeah, it looks like this bottom side of the map is gonna be a point of contention as both of these players are trying to expand towards that side. Uh, you know, for the Zerg, the gold base, while Beyond going for the bottom left. And, uh, yeah, basically, if you look at it, all the bases has been taken. There's no more bases uh, to be taken. Oh, yeah, this is, this is a pretty, pretty cool point to get to in the game. So we, we have the Zerg basically claiming two-thirds of the map, if you look at the mini-map, right? We have the... Sort of halfway mark already taken by the Zerg. Now the Zerg is actually going to push in the bottom left as well. A lot of Banelings rolling through, killing a lot of SCVs, which in a way is actually good for the Terran at this point in the game. That means that they can continue maxing out. They can replace that lost supply with army supply. Ghosts are going to move back on forward to retaliate. Blue Lords coming in from the north, the Infestors as well. Big Fungal taking down... Oh no, the Ghosts actually stay alive! No way! That Oh my gosh. Okay, so Beyond is... 
very happy about that. Dark is probably a little disappointed about having traded unfavorably. Now, he does have a pretty big bank. He has uh, 3,000 minerals and, well, a minute ago he had 4,000 gas. Not a bad amount, but he needs to keep trading at least somewhat, you know, like, he doesn't want to give away anything for free, right? That's that's when you start losing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, right now, both of these players just trying to re-max out. Uh, oh, actually, we're having our first nuke, in nuke introduced here as the Coast Academy is researching a nuke. That's going to be helpful uh, because there are a lot of static defenses here at the gold base. If you can kind of nuke it, uh, you can kind of get rid of that, uh, get rid of that obstacle, and then you can uh, kind of push forward with the remaining of your army. Uh, these right. ghosts, though, kind of brave, uh, kind of shooting at the front, uh, although he does scan ahead, so he knows the position of Dark's army. Once again, Ling run by. So annoying to deal with, especially uh, on a base where there's only orbitals, no planetaries to deal with them. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I would have expected that base to be at least a planetary, but it looks like <laughs> this base is also an orbital. Some more SCVs are going to get taken down. Now, the Broodlords did position themselves excellently in the northern part of the map. They are going to start shelling away at these orbitals. <laughs> now, a bunch of snipes are going down. EMPs prevent oh. the Infestors from doing any sort of damage. Look at that, only the Vipers have energy left. They're gonna yoink a, a few of these ghosts to try to retaliate, but how many Broodlords and how many Infestors just went down? I don't think too many Infestors went down, but they all lost energy for sure. And now the Thors are moving in from the bottom side of the map. Ravagers are gonna try to deal with them. They actually will force back the Thors, but there is gonna be a tank and some Hellbats to reinforce as well. Ghosts are coming back on down. More Broodlords on the way, but man, I gotta give it up to Beyond. That was an excellent engagement. Again, catching Dark off guard, sniping a bunch of Broodlords, and then preventing the Infestors from going off with those preemptive EMPs. Yeah, unfortunately for Dark, he didn't have an, uh, an Overseer with him. He was trying to rely on the Spore Callers to provide him vision of the, of the Ghost. Unfortunately, you know, there's only a certain range that the spore can provide and uh beyond getting a huge uh efficient trade there and, uh, as you can see in the units lost tab a lot more resources being lost here by dark compared to our his uh red terran terran uh, counterpart yeah that's a really good point now in your opinion how do you how do you use your overseers do you siege them up because that does give them a bit further range, but the thing is that makes them susceptible to getting gunned down. Do you keep them on your Broodlord hockey? Do you keep them on your Infestor hockey? Like, how does that actually work? Yeah, so you want the uh, Overseer to be in the general vicinity. vicinity uh, oh, actually, hold that thought. There is a huge engagement here, and a lot of these doors are stuck here at this ledge, or I don't know what you call it. But the oh my gosh, so much damage is going down. <laughs> Some yeah. of the ghosts are actually going down. They're trying to fire off their snipes. A bunch of these Broodlords are still alive, but just barely. That was an insane trade. I I guess, yeah, it looks like Beyond came out on top. How many resources were lost just now? Oh my gosh, look at that dark out of a bank all of a sudden. He's not even maxed out anymore. He's trying to uh, get some fungals off. He's trying to yoink some of the ghosts, but these Thors and these remaining ghosts are just too much. I think I think that Beyond just won. I mean, he's, he's just barreling through right now. Yeah, I mean, he just got so much doors. Uh, you know, when you you got Broodlords against a person going for doors, you gotta have overwhelming amounts of Broodlord numbers in order to overcome that many doors. Uh, right. But you know what, with some Narrows, maybe, uh, but he doesn't have enough energy on these Infestors. These Infestors getting sniped oh. out. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, no way. That Liberator actually doing a solid amount of damage, but... You know, it's, it's not going to be enough. I mean, oh. there are no Broodlords <laughs> left. Beyond is almost at 170 supply. GG is called. Beyond is going to take game number four. All right. Looks like both of these players are respecting one another. You know, sometimes in the last game like this, you know, you have a player that can get a little bit cheeky. Go for a uh, YOLO build. Go for some <laughs> sort of cheese. You know, we've seen oh, yeah. so many times Maru doing that. Which has, uh, you know, worked out well for him. But we also see 
games like these where both players are just respectful for one of one another and they just go for you know a standard build although i gotta say beyond actually starting with a cc first before barracks what do you think of this mm, i like it a lot in theory in practice it's lost me a lot of games <laughs> <laughs> but i think in this case it's, it works just fine against dark you know we see that he's going for that very standard hatch gas pool i believe and he might even be looking to take an early third bait. No, okay. So sometimes we see the Zerg sending out that first drone, the drone that's at the natural right now. We would see it sent out to the third base location, and then sometimes Zergs go for a crazy early third, like, you know, before Lings, before Queens, that kind of thing. But I don't think that's going to be the case here. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. All right, looks like the drone will go, will be sent out to the third base. Going to take that at the uh, normal time. Now, uh, Dark does see, you know, the timing of that orbital uh, from beyond. Mm. So he should recognize the fact that this is a CC first. And I would really love to see beyond right now starting to wall off that natural. Because, uh, you know, when you go for such a greedy build like this, you're going to be a little bit vulnerable against any early attack and in order to defend against an, any early attack uh, you definitely want to wall off to make sure those links doesn't run by yeah that's a good point on the other hand dark can interpret that information to mean that he can squeeze out you know maybe one two more rounds of drones before he makes defensive links for the hellions and it looks like that's going to be the case here so again both players really respecting each other although See, that's the thing, Snoopy. We say that a lot as casters, but do you think that cheeses, in your opinion, are cheeses disrespectful? I know that they can be kind of, they can be extremely tilting sometimes, but genuinely, like, as the cheeser, are you trying to disrespect your opponent? I don't think so. I think that, you know, it's very normal to cannon rush somebody. It's very normal to three rack somebody. Like, I just feel like it, because it's so tilting, people interpret it as disrespectful, but I don't think it actually is. Yeah, I'm with you. I never saw, you know, cheeses or even proxies in the early game as disrespectful. I think it's just part of the game. It's strategy, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, you know, you gotta be really bad at defending it or really good at it. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like you have to be good or bad at other things, right? Like at the at your mid-game control, late-game control, etc. Exactly. Oh, these Hellions are going to sneak on by that one Queen. There are not that many Lings here, and they don't actually have speed, so they're going to go straight for the natural. Drones are going to be pulled away. Let's see how many drones go down. They're going to go up into the main as well. Some drones are being pulled off the line to try to help defend. More Queen, uh, excuse me, more Lings are on the way. I like that preemptive split trying to trap the Hellions. I, okay, normally I would say great job for the drones to sort of trap the Hellions like that, but... <laughs> Not at the cost of 11 drones. That's a ridiculous amount of damage. That <laughs> was not good. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely not good. Oh no, even Banshee follow up as well. No spore, uh, spore crawlers. Oh my god, no detection. I don't think there's Man. even a, a lair. Yeah, there's no this lair. This is the classic Zerg versus Terran 1 2 punch. You know, every Terran dreams of a scenario like this where they can just open up. Basically like Beyond, right? You, you get the early command center and then you send in the Hellions and you roast a bunch of drones and then they don't have spore crawlers and then you send in a Banshee and stuff like that. And then next up you're gonna follow up with the five racks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. I yeah. just, I love it. I mean, you can have not asked for a better opening here for the Terran player. I mean, this is a Terran's dream. Oh yeah, definitely. How many kills did that Banshee have? It probably had maybe three or four, something like that. Yeah, I mean, 19 drones overall being lost Ooh. this game, and this is before the six minute mark, so... Ouch. Yeah. Ouch indeed. Yeah. Now, of course, we did see a similar drone count from Dark in the last game, but the difference was he was going for a Roach Ravager composition. That is not the case here. He's still trying to drone up. He's still trying to figure out what composition he wants. Just now finishing his uh, fourth base, though. You know, about to finish up the fourth base. <laughs> In the meantime, Bion just started his fourth base. That is not a good sign if you're the Zerg. 
Yeah, this is a uh, quite a tough hole here for our our Zerg player. And I mean, if anyone though is gonna come back into this game, I mean, Dark is one of those Zerg players that I think he can. But this is such a big deficit that it's just hard for me to imagine how Dark can climb out of this. I mean, uh, you know, he he still ha he, he he's done a good job in terms of recovering from all those lost realms. I mean, he's sitting at 66, so he's ahead, but. You know, I, I'm sure. Imagine if the, you know those 19 drones were not killed. I mean, he'd be so right. way ahead right now. Exactly, exactly. Now, like you said, if anybody can do it, it is Dark, right? He is known for oh. coming back from what typical Zergs would consider a deficit. Now, one of those ways is by sending in a huge Ling run by. They're actually going to get into the natural. They're going to ravage the third base as well, forcing back a lot of the SCVs. Oh my gosh, this is a huge, huge. Uh, Pullback from Byun, he's pulling back his entire army, the Hellbats, the Marines, and there are still some Lings <laughs> taking over the natural base right now. So, not only did Dark buy himself some time, but he actually forced back the entire army. So, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's very happy about that move. Yeah, that was a huge, huge uh, pickoff there by Dark. I mean, right now, you know, he's kind of... Uh neutralize all the drone kills that he lost or all the drones that he lost in the early game uh and i mean you know losing 19 drones before the 60 minute mark, 60 minute mark is still worse than 15 scvs at the uh around the, before the eight minute mark but still right. that that does help uh, uh dark a lot in terms of regaining um some some of the grounds here and now all of a sudden you know he's uh He's uh, pretty decently ahead in terms of the work count. Uh, however, he's still behind in terms of the uh, army supply and also the uh, the upgrades. I mean, his 2-2, two -two, uh, or sorry, Beyond's 2-2 two -two is right now at the same time being researched as 1-1 one -one of Dark. So for the for a better part of this game, uh, Beyond is going to be way ahead in the upgrades. Oh yeah, for sure. I do not fault Dark at all for going for that third Evo chamber. <laughs> And look at this, what do we have on the production tab? We have Hydras, like we were talking about last game. So <laughs> this very, very old school, classic composition, Ling Bane Hydra is one of my favorites. You know, you can, in theory, play this against uh, in almost any matchup. You know, you can deal with drops, you can deal with uh, big armies, that kind of thing. Lurkers are sort of still the, the better sort of style nowadays, you know, but that requires late game tech, that requires a lot more investment, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so like you said, Byun is now not so much ahead. You know, now both players are kind of on even footing. Both are spending their money while they're able to continue macroing. But like you said, once that 2-2 two -two kicks in, I feel like Byun might want to go for a big, big timing. That would be really powerful. Start clearing out some of that creep, which is already sort of kind of halfway across the map. Now, Byun has been doing a good job of keeping it back. I expected the creep to be a little bit further at this point, but of course the queens are just so busy running around trying to do 50 different things at once. And we actually do see a lurker den. Okay, so if this goes into the late game, we might see more of a ghost versus lurker kind of matchup. Yeah, however, Dark needs to buy enough time to get that uh, lurker den uh, tech running. Uh, Hive is still not quite done yet, uh, and he needs to deal with this uh, force that's kind of attacking in the uh, middle of the map here. Oh my god, so many Widow Mines actually. Yeah, I like that move a lot. Widow Mines are, in a lot of ways, even better against Ling Bane than tanks. Now we do have some Marauders, and those initial Hellions that were turned into Hellbats, they actually never died, so they're gonna lead the charge. Ling Bane coming down from the top side of the ramp, they're gonna actually get huge connections, forcing a lot of that bio back now that initiates the double drop into the main base so will dark be able to respond in time i think that he should be able to some pretty decent ling splits they're going to clean up the rest of the widow mines but that was the key to engaging the bio is that you in, you don't want to engage on top of the mines you want to engage where the mines are not now this double drop is getting a decent amount of damage killing off uh three queens i believe main push is also trying to get some more work done but not quite able to just yet Looks like uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start start uh, harassing this base here, but I think we'll finally get cleaned up. So 
So not 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 finding too much damage overall. Yeah, Beyond is expanding pretty aggressively, you know, towards the front rather than towards the side. And he's gonna actually keep pushing down here. Now there are lurkers out on the field already, and they do have fast burrow, which is nice. But I think that range is maybe a little bit more important in this case. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Uh, we do see a Nidus network uh, being thrown down. So, I mean, you do see some, uh, you know, Zerg players that go for Lurker. They, they would just go ahead and load up like uh, a couple of Lurkers into the Nidus Worm and and then they will pop it into like the main base of the Terran and it becomes a real, real hassle because you know, the lurkers get on top of the either the mineral lines or the production building and you can even park it like near the ramp so if the terran player try to retreat back into the main base he will have to you know kind of uh go through a meat shredder of a ramp as the lurker just uh does so much splash damage right right now that double drop from earlier was replaced however lings are already in the on site to deal with that that is a lot of Widow Mines. I, I I, really have to say it like that's a pretty ridiculous amount, so I don't think that the Lings are going to be able to uh, go down there anytime soon. Now we do see that Nidus coming into play here. Bion has spotted it. It looks like he's going to send the Ghost back up onto the high ground to deal with it. This Bio is going to push on forward, however. This is getting kind of down to the wire for both players. You know, we need the lurkers to pop and they do actually get a chance to burrow two ghosts were not enough to deal with the tinnitus ling bane is going to crash through down the ramps and trying to get on top of the bio they are going to take care of some of the army some very nice snipes in the main yeah but is it enough more ling streaming out of the worm and, oh man uh, yun trying to retreat his entire army to defend against this he needs to because a lot of the production buildings, again, uh, is here in the main base. And it looks like finally Bion is going to go ahead and start cleaning this up here. Oh, actually, looks like uh, oh. we'll get some nice building connection before, before this ends. Yeah, that's a very good move by Dark. He oh. just cost Bion a lot of production time. Now he's sending in the Lings into the, the fourth base location to the south. This is basically Dark doing a Terran. Like, he's he's <laughs> attacking the Terran on all sides, you know? Which, which is typically what the Terran does against the Zerg in this matchup. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Beyond is just scrambling desperately to try to stabilize as all these Lings are just ravaging his base. 21 SCVs going down. Oh, man. That's definitely going to hurt his economy. I mean, even if he were on, uh, you know, something like 80... Something drones, uh, excuse me, SCVs earlier. That's still, you know, 25% loss. That's a pretty significant hit to your economy. But funnily enough, Bion is actually ahead in supply. So maybe, you know, Dark did get a lot of damage done, but he didn't necessarily trade efficiently. And in the long run, it's all about the trading. Yeah, this just seems to be like the classic Bion scenario where he's just down heavily in terms of the worker count, but he's so ahead in the army supply that you know you still give him a chance to win and i think he might actually oh. <laughs> might do it because beyond he's yeah. right now about to just snipe out all these lurkers there's no detection no this way color. oh look at those snipes that final snipe did get cancelled just because it got hit by a lurker but those were some excellent snipes killing off even some eggs that widow mine hit did basically nullify a bunch of those <laughs> zerglings as well so they were not able to sort of jump on top of the ghost and then you know stop the snipes from going down so really just a, a snowball effect of good micro you know it it really pushes the terran's benefit when they're across on the zerg side of the map now a nidus worm is a pretty decent distraction that first overlord has been there since the beginning of the game it does finally give its life for the swarm but <laughs> yeah that was whew, wow yeah, and now we are pretty much in a kind of a interesting scenario where Yun is going to go ahead and start putting on some pressure, uh, and we wonder if Dark can get uh, his units into Yun's uh, bases. He's tried a couple of times, but Yun has been able to uh, kind of pick it off those Nidus's. 
And so what does he right. do right now? I mean, right now he how many lurkers is that? Uh, oh, wow, seventeen lurkers. Okay, he can oh, wow. definitely do some damage with that. Yeah, even against the ghost, right? You just sacrifice or not sacrifice, but you have a few tanks, some of the snipe shots, and then you rush forward with the rest of them. Now, I love what Bion is doing. He's got two sort of main armies. He's got one main army to the north that just picked off that base, mostly uh, marines and marauders and ghosts. And then he's got the main ghost army putting down some big EMPs, by the way. Were those EMPs? Why? Were there investors or vipers on the field? I don't think so. No, he just EMPed the overseers. Uh, I guess he had nothing to really EMP because, you know, his, his ghosts were trapped, so he needed to do something with them. The oh, got it, got it. Uh, and, you know, maybe he can EMP the, the overseer. Uh, but that doesn't really do too much. <laughs> it still provides right. a vision, but right, yeah, I guess right. just do something before you die. Even, right, even right. though it doesn't do anything. Ooh, a few ghosts do go down before they get picked up into the medevac, but that medevac will, or those medevacs will pick up the rest of the units, scout out whether or not that base has been retaken. Now, these lurkers are going to rush forward. Lings are going to try to get up into the natural. Liberator is in position to start you know, holding back some of the lurkers, but definitely not all of them. That is a ridiculous amount of lurkers, 24 in total. They're gonna start working on Bion's bases. Ghosts are in place to deal with the Nidus. They are gonna try to deal with the lurkers, but it's gonna be a slow and steady sort of engagement for the Terran player. He doesn't wanna lose Ghost, which he does lose some to the Banelings, but for the Zerg player, it's just, you know, being able to burrow right on top of the bases and then trying to deal as much damage as possible. It's basically like the Zerg is really rushing forward, whereas the Terran is trying to methodically approach the counterattack. So again, Bion is on top of the supply. He's losing a lot of buildings, but I don't think he's losing any supply, and that's the key here. Yeah, I mean, these Liberators though, they're doing so much work for, for Bion. I mean, there's no anti-air. All these Hygulus has been turned into Lurkers, which doesn't shoot up into the air, and oh. so... Yeah, yeah, Bion losing a lot of workers and, you know, bases, but his, uh, his army still stands. So much ghost still left over, These still no answer for these Liberators as well. Yeah, what do you think of just going mass Ling Bane? How, how does that work here in the late game? Because, in theory, you know, Lings and Banes are, should be too much for the Liberators. And then, of course, you've got Bane Lings to jump on top of the... Uh, ghosts as well. I feel like in theory it's supposed to work, but in practice we never see it happen in the late game. Well, what do you think? Yeah, I think there's just too much here that uh, can deal with the Ling Baneling, and you know, right now you know, the bases are kind of suited up with planetary, so even if you try to do a counterattack, those planetaries are gonna, you know, kill a lot of these Lings before they go, uh, before the planetary goes down itself, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm loving Bion's army better right now, and <laughs> I guess it proves otherwise. I mean, Dark uh, does prove that as uh, he does tap out, and Bion, with an amazing Game 5 victory, will take the series and be our champion of ESO Open Cup Americas.